Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is a devastating neurodegenerative disease that gradually paralyzes individuals as the brain begins to lose communication with the muscles of the body. As the disease progresses, patients typically become incapable of eating, swallowing, and then finally breathing, at which point death is caused if artificial respiration is not implemented. Symptoms usually begin as normal signs of aging, but quickly progress into more serious indicators of ALS. Some of the early signs are weakness, fatigue, muscle cramping, or twitching. Some of the later symptoms that can develop are tripping, dropping items, slurred speech, weight loss, difficulty swallowing, decreased muscle tone, and shortness of breath. There are many different mechanisms supported by research. Essentially, motor neurons in the brain and spinal cord are attacked and degenerated. Since motor neurons provide control over muscles and allow for voluntary movement, the death of motor neurons results in the loss of this ability. Clinical trials are used to test the efficacy of treatments. These trials are usually split into four phases. The purpose in phase one is to assess drug safety, determine safe dosages of the drug, and identify any side effects. Since this is often the first time a drug is tested in humans, a small number of participants are recruited, usually those who are not getting better with standard treatments. If the drug is found to be effective with the reversible side effects, then it will move into phase two. Here the main purpose is to once again assess drug safety while determining best dosage and collecting more data regarding the drug's effectiveness. This portion of the trial normally involves 100 or more participants. Phase 3 involves 1000 or more participants and is utilized to establish drug safety guidelines in order to make the drug available in the market. Additionally, side effects and efficacy of the drug are monitored and compared with the existing treatments. Finally. Phase 4 is conducted after the drug is approved and is on the market. This phase gathers information on things like the best way to use a drug and the long-term benefits as well as risks. One promising drug currently in clinical trials is Neuron. This drug converts stem cells to cells which can release factors that support motor neurons and delay their degradation. The converted cells are injected back into the spinal cord in order to slow progression of ALS. Another drug is CK2127107, which has been shown to improve muscle function and performance. This is done through the use of an activator molecule called Fast Skeletal Muscle Troponin Activator, which increases the sensitivity of muscles to calcium and thus increasing their ability to contract. Uh, my name is John Turnbull, and uh, I'm a neurologist, and uh, I thought it was an important disease. Uh, that needed people to look after in Hamilton, so that's what I did. Uh, the simplest outcome measure in ALS is survival. Do people live longer? You could look at surrogate measures. You don't want to wait long enough to see if people die. You could see, let's say, whether their breathing, does it deteriorate quicker? Uh, does their strength deteriorate quicker or slower, depending on what you're trying to test or not. There's a composite scale called the ALS Functional Rating Scale, which people use as a sole outcome measure. Yeah. Uh, so the ALS uh, FRS R just R just means revised, and they just added two extra questions on about breathing. And it's what I talked about before. It's a functional scale. And it just says how, how well are people coping with the disease. The impedance uh, uh, studies on uh, muscle uh, is sort of an idea that, that might work. I don't think I've, I've never seen it in a clinical trial as an outcome. Um, what was that? There was another one in there too. Uh, um. Um. FVC. That the kind of breathing stuff. Yeah, and people do use that as a breathing outcome. So that you'll often have a primary outcome that may be, let's say, the ALS FRS. Uh, and then there will be secondary outcomes which should support it. As Dr. Turnbull stated, there are several methods that can be used. To start, activity limitation is measured using a 12 item scale called ALS FRS R. 
This assessment is done by evaluating speech, salivation, swallowing, handwriting, cutting food and handling utensils, dressing and hygiene, turning in bed and adjusting bed clothes, walking, climbing stairs, dyspnea, orthopnea, and respiratory insufficiency. Electrical impedance myography is one of the most effective and promising non-invasive techniques. This uses transdermal application of high frequency and low intensity electrical stimulation to calculate muscle impedance, or otherwise resistance to electrical circuit, which is an accurate measure of muscle health. Forced vital capacity measures the maximum amount of air a person can breathe out after a maximum inhalation. This outcome measure evaluates the muscles involved in breathing. Survival without tracheostomy is also another outcome measure that is looked for. The unfortunate thing is that we don't have an outcome measure that directly relates to the disease process, measure, that measures the, the, uh, the nitty gritty, what's actually going on with the nerve cells that's causing them to die. You know? so, uh, it would be nice to have an outcome measure uh, that was more directly related to the pathophysiology. Motor unit number estimation assesses remaining motor units and is another direct measure of motor neuron loss. This is based on a ratio of maximal compound muscle action potential, CMAP, or otherwise the sum of all motor units, divided by the average single motor unit potential. A compound muscle action potential is an electrophysiological measure generated by maximally stimulating a nerve and depolarizing all muscle fibers innervated by it. A reduction of CMAP amplitude reflects loss of motor axons and concomitant progression of ALS. Pharmacokinetic biomarkers can help identify if the compound under investigation is actually biologically active at the site of motor neurons. Additionally, Prognostic biomarkers such as BMI and uric acid levels are also useful when combined with prediction algorithms. As we've learned, ALS is a serious neurodegenerative disease. Although there is no available cure, current research surrounding treatment looks promising. As scientists continue to improve outcome measures for ALS studies, more effective assessment of treatments will also be made possible.